Okay, hey guys, so this video is gonna be a little bit different. I didn't film an intro because obviously this is not done, but I will be showing you guys how I created this and the pants. Um, this is my new size 18 dress form, so it is similar in measurements to what I am right now, but it obviously is not perfect compared to what it is in my body. So um, I just wanted to show you guys the process of drafting this pattern from scratch the pattern for the blazer and the pattern for the pants from scratch this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial like my other pattern drafting tutorials are this is a kind of watch me draft and be confused and ask questions i don't know <laughs> but um i do show you guys all the steps to draft both of these so i hope you guys are interested in this video and then my next uh, video following up this will show you guys step by step how to alter our basic blazer pattern and our basic pants pattern to create a more stylized um, pants suit, which will be made from this red fabric here. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get to it. Alright, so I have already expanded my bodice block and I've just connected it to my skirt block so that I can extend down my hips a little bit uh, to create a jacket block. The book walks me through kind of step by step how to uh, expand my uh, block so that my regular bodice block, I'm pretty much adding ease to it so that I can go ahead and use this as my jacket block. This is the book that I'm using. Oh my goodness. Uh, if the words weren't in English, I would have to say that this book is not in English. It's very confusing. Um, you can see me kind of reading through to kind of figure out where to even start. Um, so I decided to go ahead and uh, just kind of, I don't know. I spent, I think I spent more time reading the book than actually um, drafting the pattern. So like I said earlier in the intro, this is definitely not going to be a step-by-step, -step, So, uh, but I will explain some of the pieces um, towards this. So what it's doing is it's having me extend my center front. Um, it's having me extend it by one inch. It told me to measure up um, um, to where I want the breakaway to be. I think that's what they called it. And then extend one inch from that point downwards. And then it also had me extend my shoulder. It looks like... I don't know, we're working in centimeters here, so I think it was like 2.5 centimeters or 5 eighths of an inch. Uh, extend my shoulder and then connect that down to the breakaway point. And then it's also having me formulate some kind of stuff, like extend the, <sighs> extend it outwards a little bit so that I can connect that downwards and create like a lapel and then connect it together in a smooth line. I know I'm explaining this horribly. I will link below um, in the description box where I got this book from. It was Amazon. Okay, so I finished um, drafting the base part of the jacket. I've added the lapel here. I think I filmed some of that so you guys should see that. And then I spent almost four hours drafting the inset sleeve. So it's two pieces here, the upper sleeve and the under sleeve. And then I measured the arm side to see if it would be the same as in my front and back bodice put together. And it's like 10 inches bigger. So I'm not sure if that's right, but I did follow all of the instructions. So hopefully it is. And I'm obviously going to be making quite a few mock-ups of this before we cut into our crate to actually make the suit. So um, I'm going to continue to add the collar bit to here. We're going to do a notched collar. Let me see this kind of collar so I'm going to draft the collar next we've already got the lapel so I'm going to draft the collar if you guys are interested I'm using uh, patterns um, sorry fashion pattern making techniques volume 3 to help me and I'm going to draft the collar next okay so I'm starting uh, to go ahead and draft the collar and y'all if I try to explain this to you guys it would not be English. So the first thing I did was extend uh, my um, lapel 
out a little bit more because I wanted it to be a little bit more dramatic. So I extended it out about two more centimeters. And then the book had me move my dart over a centimeter, which I'm not sure what the point of moving the dart a centimeter was, but I did it because I just wanted to follow the book. And then it had me uh, start to create my collar by measuring uh, the neckline of my back piece, extending my, um, a, you know, creating an extension from my shoulder of the front piece upwards that amount and then outwards um, and then making it even and uh, just creating a collar, y'all. It's it, it's in the book. Okay, I, I still don't know how I did this. And then I also decided that I wanted my lapel to be a little bit more angular. So I did uh, move it down about a centimeter and a half and then connect that back over to our smooth line there. And then I just finished creating my uh, my collar portion, which I traced out and then uh, copied over into a new paper so that I can create a, um, a doubled version of it, right? But then I ended up cutting that version in half and using one side for my upper collar, which is about um, three quarters of a centimeter. Is that even a thing? 0.3 centimeters um, larger than the under collar. So, um, all right. So, luckily, this book does have step by step instructions on how to assemble um, the coat or the jacket, but um, it doesn't exactly show you how to create the facing and the lining from the, um, the pattern itself. But what I gather from looking at these pictures is the um, the facing is just a draw, uh, tracing of your um, your lapel, Sim similar to the way we do other facing. So it's just a tracing of your lapel extended slightly out into the the um, the body of the jacket, and then the rest of the jacket that would have been jacket is uh, now converted into lining. That's what I'm getting from this photo here. Oh, this photo here as well as uh, some of these line drawings in the book. I really wish it would uh, break it down a little bit more. Um, I mean, not beginner, I'm not definitely not a beginner, but uh, a little bit more friendly because this, oh my goodness. It doesn't tell you how to come up with all of the additional pieces that it takes to make a jacket like the, the back facing of which that's self-explanatory um it kind of leaves you astray when it comes to not astray but just leaves you hanging when it comes to um figuring out the sleeve situation like it doesn't have you measure the arm side not once to be able to draft the sleeve and i think that's where my issue is because the sleeve is now 10 inches larger than my arm size. So I think the only way that I'm going to actually get a great fit from this is to actually um, make multiple mock-ups, which I was planning on doing anyway, but I don't want to make like 10 of them. But I am confident. I feel like once I get this, um, oh, it even has men's coats. Once I get this down, I will uh, be able to um, replicate this over and over and over again. So and they have lots of different coat variations in here. All right, so I guess what I'm gonna do, and I probably do this off camera because I'm gonna leave time in this video to be able to do all my mock-ups. I'm going to um, trace all my pieces on fresh pattern paper to make them nice and pretty. I'm gonna do my facings. Okay, so these are all of my freshly traced pieces so that everything looks nice and clean as I am um, working because I can't stand clouded pattern pieces and I'm just going to use this roll of muslin I get my muslin wholesale at a local place so um, I bought it buy it by the 20 yard roll and I'm using it uh, now to create this mock-up and it's perfect because it's a very stiff almost like it feels like it had been like starched or something it's a very stiff but um, not so heavyweight muslin so I think it's perfect for this application and I'm going to go ahead and copy all of my pieces and then I'm using my disappearing ink pen to transfer all of my darts and things like that I don't want to get too much in construction because we will be um, doing obviously a detailed video on the pantsuit that we make from this base pattern this is what the first iteration of the mock-up looks like without the sleeves and then I will uh, go ahead and set in my sleeves Thank you. 
Okay, so let's look at just this side and not that side because I set the sleeve in wonky on that side. So it looks really good. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my shoulder dart and I'm going to put it into the armhole and do an arm's eye uh, princess seam or maybe just turn this into an arm's eye dart. My sleeve is set in really well. I need to, come on, I need to shorten it by how much ever this is, maybe two and a half, three inches. The back looks really good. I am quite short-waisted compared to my mannequin, so that's why you're getting this pulling there, but when I try it on, it's not like that on me. And then I'm also contemplating adding a vent to my back seam because it is pretty tight across my butt here, so I'm gonna add a vent here. But besides that, I really do like the way it fits, so I can go ahead and uh, transfer my adjustments over to paper. Okay, so I just pulled up uh, my inspiration image on Pinterest just to see how that's looking compared to how I want mine to be. And then I decided to move my shoulder dart over to a uh, bust dart here at the side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and true that up and then draw my dart legs to be shorter so that um, everything is perfect now I am uh, drawing in an angle kind of uh, towards my hem so that I can have that angled look and then I'm trying to figure out where I want my welt pocket to start and then I'm just gonna go ahead and create all the components for the welt pocket so for a welt pocket you need to create a pocket facing and then you also need um, uh, well you need two of the facings right you need one that has your box on it and then you need one without it but they're both the same size then you're also going to need your pocket flap and your pocket bag so i'm just creating all of those right now and i've been doing a lot of bag making so creating a welt light pocket is um, almost second nature to me now which is great so i created um, all of the components for the pockets and then i'm just marking how much of each that i need and obviously i am still following a blog post on how to create this so i will link the blog post below in the description box uh, if you guys want to go ahead and um, create a similar kind of pocket setup that I'm doing. This is a welt pocket with a flap and I love the way it turned out. Ignore what I'm doing here because it just did not turn out right. And then I'm also um, redrawing in my shoulder dart. When I expanded my back block, it had me eliminate the shoulder dart but not take the dart from the side. So I just drew it back in because I felt like I needed it. And then I also added a kick pleat to the back and then I'm creating a facing. Now I do realize that if I do a full lining of this that I don't need this facing, but if the jacket is not lined, then the facing is a must. So I like to have it anyway. And then I'm creating my facing for the front. All I'm doing is tracing out the uh, lapel and then uh, up to the bust point and then I'm just going to go ahead and connect that all the way down to the hem and this is going to be my uh, facing and then I'm drawing the rest of uh, the front of the jacket and the rest of that is going to be the lining and I'm creating a notch there at the bust point. All right, so this is our final mock-up. This is what it looks like. Oh, it looks so good. I'm so excited, guys. So the only thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to adjust my sleeves. I'm going to bring them in quite a bit around the wrist. Uh, and then I will just add like a button closure here. Um, I'm also playing with placement of the pockets. I did a welt pocket. You guys see me draft it and sped up version. But um, I need to narrow the width of my um, pocket flap, but besides that, I think once that is narrowed, then the welt pocket situation will be, will be nice. I love this. I think it looks really good. This has that effect, which I love. Let me unpin. This is so new holding an actual camera instead of my phone to vlog. <laughs> as far as the collar goes, with the facing into the lining. So this looks, I'm really happy with the way this looks. Obviously it's just like thrown on there, but the sleeve looks good. Um, I, I did have some puckering issues. I didn't add the two rows of stitching to ease in my sleeve because <laughs> this is like mock-up number two for this one. And then I mocked up like five pairs of pants. So I cut some corners, but it looks, Overall, it looks really good. So I'm really happy with this. 
the vent in the back worked out perfectly. Which way? Which way do I have it? I have this way. The vent in the back works out perfectly, so that's good. I just have to figure out how to line it, and then this is going to be my base jacket. So, um, this will be the pattern from which I draft all of my specialized, more stylized coats from, or jackets from. I just want to have a base pattern so that I can, um, you know, have something to start from. All right, so now that we have the jacket all sorted out, I applied my adjustments to them and then I moved on to the pants. I started drafting an entire portion of the pants, I like literally almost done. And then I realized, oh my God, I used the hip, the waist measurement for the top and not the hip measurement. And I had to scrap it. So I decided to start over and I will put the link below in the description box of where, uh, of the blog that I used to go ahead and draft these pants. But pretty much it's had me, it had me measure my waist measurement, my hat, and then it divide that by four and put each, um, the distance of each of that on e either side of this center line. And then it's having me measure down uh, from my waist to hip and then my waist to my crotch length. And then those what these two those are what these two lines are. Now it's having me extend my crotch to the front just a little bit and the crotch to the back a little bit more. And then come in a little bit at the top of my front and then in a little bit more <laughs> at the top of my back. I'll link uh, below the blog post so you guys know what I mean. I can't remember the exact measurements, but then it had me connect those uh, to that uh, the baseline that we had um, with my half of waist, I'm oh, sorry, with my quarter of a waist measurement here because remember we're working with half patterns and then it had me measure the center of the crotch line and then that is now my crease line um, for which for me to continue to uh, draft the rest of my pants. So I'm just squaring a line down all the way down and then I did go ahead to um, add a little bit extra um, at the bottom for my hem because I didn't cut enough paper. So I added a little bit at the bottom for my hem and I'm recycling the paper, the failed first attempt on these pants. I'm recycling that so I can go ahead and extend my pants downwards and then I'm just gonna go ahead and square that line and then finish off my pants connecting my crotch point down to um, the point where I want my, uh, my hem to be. This was uh, quite uh, quite straightforward um, for drafting, but um, this is a really standard way to draft. So it doesn't account to like people who have big tummies or people who have larger butts and things like that. So I did uh, have to do five mock-ups to make these pants fit. So I'm going to go ahead and get the pants cut out and then transferred over to muslin and mocked up. I did add three quarters of an inch seam allowance around the whole entire edge when I uh, cut it out so that I had room for adjustments. So I didn't have to cut a whole bunch of mock-ups, which I still did. This is the first iteration. So the first mock-up, number one, my side seams are shifting towards the front. My waistline in the back is pretty low. And then um, I'm having some pulling here around my thighs because I'm guessing that the thighs are too tight and uh, my crotch length I'm like I'm being so dramatic my crotch length is not long enough you see it bunching up all up up in there it ain't right since I did have three quarter inch seam allowances in this one I just let every seam out by a quarter of an inch and this is what it looks like now so it fits a little bit better but it is a little bit baggy here obviously I'm still getting the upwards kind of smile lines from the crotch but I can actually move in these ones so I know I need to elongate my crotch and obviously the waistline is still a little bit too low in the back so I am going to go um, take all of my adjustments that I see here I'm going to take them and I'm going to add um, make my adjustments onto paper you see how I'm having to pull that down I don't think you're supposed to be doing that so I have uh, I have a lot of work to do to get this to fit and like I'm showing you here my side seam still is shifted towards the front I'm pretty hard to fit because I do have like a permanent pregnant tummy even though I'm not 
pregnant. So the first thing I'm going to do is extend my crotch length here. Um, I'm going to do this for the front and for the back. I extended it and I also uh, lowered it slightly, like lowered the seat of it slightly so that um, I have a little bit more room to play, if that makes sense. And now I'm just going to go ahead and add the quarter of an inch um, around my entire pattern I'm adding that um, so that I have the extra room so that it wasn't super tight like how the first mock-up was so I'm just like I'm saying I'm um, recycling the failed attempt of the first pattern drafting and I'm just adding all of adding all of my seam allowance to this For my back, I also lowered the um, the kind of curve of the um, of the crotch. God, why is it so hard to talk? I lowered the curve of the crotch, and then I also extended it slightly, um, but it still wasn't enough. So I. I don't know, I guess I need to extend it by like an inch and a half, two inches. I don't know, I've been wanting to do it like small in small iterations, but I'm not trying to make a thousand mock-ups. I also um, sliced up in my hip line here and then added a little bit of fullness there. I added an inch and then I added an inch to the top too. And this uh, really helped uh, my waist sit where it needs to sit. So here I am trying it on with the jacket and the, obviously the pants. So the jacket obviously is a little bit big, but that's fine. And my pants, I'm still getting this smile line here, but the back fits pretty well. I'm still getting some pulling here. I know it's not gonna be perfect y'all cause I'm fitting myself, but I do want it to be as good as possible. So what I did off camera was I pinched in all of this extra fullness here and then I transferred it over to paper and just absolutely removed it. So this is what it looks like. Uh, this is my pattern piece and I created a line that came uh, for those two bunching areas. So a line that was uh, came from my crotch line kind of went up jagged to my dart and then over to my side seam and then I took out an inch from my crotch uh, length and then um, a bit from my um, the the innards of the pattern and hopefully that will help I am gonna do uh, quite a few more mock-ups off camera and then uh, when we come to do our pantsuit hopefully uh, we'll have a better um, a better fit but thank you guys so much for watching this video I know this wasn't like a step-by-step -step tutorial but I did want to show all of my subscribers uh, the process that I go through when I'm learning new things and things like that so I didn't add this to just the members only section because it's not a tutorial it's not a step-by-step -step pattern drafting tutorial so I thought everybody would like to see my process on draft uh, on attempting to draft a blazer and pants which they both still need adjustments and i'll do the rest of that off camera these are all of the names of all of my channel members thank you guys so much for supporting me especially through uh these trying times so that the fact that you guys um uh, see value in my channel and supporting me really does uh, touch my heart and i really appreciate you guys thank you guys so much for watching this video i appreciate you guys more than you know and i'll see you in my next one